Here we have the Dell Inspiron 17 5000 series. This is the 5759. This is a newer version with Skylake. The other ones came with Haswell and Ivory Bridge. So we're going to flip to the back. We're going to remove the battery first. Now we're going to remove the DVD drive. There's one screw holding the DVD drive down. So after you remove the screw, just get your hand and drag it out and it comes out. Now we're going to remove the quick access panel or the back cover. There's two screws holding it down. Removing this gives you access to your hard drive, RAM and wireless card. So now we remove the two screws. There's a gap here where you put your finger in it to lift it up. So here's our hard drive, our wireless card, RAM stick 1, RAM stick 2. So we're going to remove the hard drive. There's four screws holding the hard drive cage down. So there's a cable here, this is where your hard drive is attached to the motherboard. You need to remove it. So after that, there's a tab here, you can see this, just lift it up and it removes your hard drive. So now we're going to have to remove the wireless card. There's one screw holding the wireless card antennas down and the wireless card. You need to remove the holder and you need to remove the antenna. And you just take out the wireless card like the RAM. It pops up slightly. So here's the RAM. There's two slots. So you push the two sides out and the RAM pops up. This is DDR3L. So you push the two sides again and it pops up and just take it out. Please note DDR3L means low voltage, you can't use normal DDR3. And there's maximum 16 gigs you can do in upgrade as there's two slots, 8 gigs in each slot. So now we're going to remove the whole back cover. You have to remove all the screws on the back. So I'm just going to point it out to you now where all the screws are. Just show you, <coughs> next to the screw hole, there's words. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but these words tell you what size the screw holes are. and what screws um, come out of it.
Now that we remove all the screws, we have to flip it over to remove the keyboard as there's a few screws under the keyboard. So you're going to need your prying tool. So here, I point out there's these gaps in between the keyboard. You'll be able to see if you have the keyboard in front of you. There's around five of them. So you shove your prying tool in it and you pry up and it pops up the keyboard. So as you can see, the keyboard pops up. Don't just rip your keyboard out as there's cables attached to it. So here you go. So there's this one and the other one. The first one's your keyboard, the big thick one, and the small one is your backlight. So here to show you again, so small one is backlight, big one is keyboard. So this is how you know if your keyboard is backlight or not. Backlit is because it has a little small one. <laughs> so we need to remove these tabs. And there's round five screws. On the keyboard, behind the keyboard. So now we removed all the screws, we're going to need our prying tool again to pry around it. So I'm just going to take it off screen as it's easier for me to pry. So now that I've finished prying it, just to show you, you pry in the black part where the black part meets the grey part. And also I forgot to remove the speaker cable, just to show you here. So after you pry it open, there's only plastic clips. Be careful when you open it in case you forgot to remove through screws. So if there's too much resistance, check again to see if you forgot any screws. You also have to re you have to unroute your wireless cable, wireless antenna cable, so it fits through the hole. So that gap there is to show you where the cable goes through. So now we're going to remove the heatsink. So there's a graph card heatsink and the CPU heatsink. The cable I just removed is the fan cable. You need to remove that. So this cable here is the LCD cable. So this is the graphic card. These black dots are the RAM for the graphic card. This is the CPU. Please note they both soldered on. <coughs> So I'm just pointing out the screws that we have to unscrew. So when you remove these screws, you don't have to remove it in order. There's numbers next to the screws telling you which screw you have to put back in. So when you remove the heatsink, you need to replace the thermal paste on it by removing the old thermal paste and reapplying new thermal paste. Just to let you know that I am unscrewing the screws in order just to tell you in case you don't know the order but when I screw it back in I screw it back in in order as well but just you don't need to remove it in order it doesn't do anything but yes you need to replace the thermal paste as I said don't be cheap on thermal paste thermal paste is important and it's not that expensive it only costs you around ten dollars and it lasts you your whole life supposedly
So now that we remove the heating, you just lift it up and it comes off. So here we go. So we're going to have to clean these black, uh, grey dots. Those grey dots are the old thermal paste. So you're just going to get, I'm just going to get my towel or tissue. Try not to use tissue, as um, tissue breaks down when you rub it. And it's just like dust everywhere. So if you can, try and use a towel. But since I don't have access to a towel now, I have to use tissue. You don't need any special liquids or alcohol solutions like everyone else says. Just rubbing off by your hand is enough. Try to clean it as much as you can. The top surface is the only important part. The sides aren't that important. Even if you struggle to get it off its side, the firm place off the side clean, that's fine. As long as the top is shiny, that's good enough. So now I'm cleaning the graphic card. As you can see, now they're both shiny. That's supposedly enough. So that's the BIOS battery. Some people ask about it. So here you go. As you can see, I already cleaned the heating with tissue. I'm going to show you how to remove the fan. Some some people want to know how to remove the fan, as that's where the dust gets held. So if dust normally gets stuck there and here, and also inside. So I have to show you how to remove the fan. So there's three screws on the fan. The screw for the fan is a lot smaller, so you're going to have to change to a smaller screwdriver. So I'm just pointing out a thing here. I actually forgot a screw, so I'm gonna have to re unscrew it again. Here you go. So the thing I showed you before is like a clip. You need to remove, you need to lift up the clip, or you need to wob wiggle it so the clip doesn't get attached to the fan anymore. So there you go. It comes off pretty easily. So here, dust gets hold on the fins if you want to clean it. And also dust gets stuck here. This is generally where dust gets stuck. And if your laptop's overheating, it's generally that issue. So I'm just going to screw it back on. So now I'm going to show you the numbers on the heating, which you have to screw in in order. It's so the thermal paste spreads out easily. So here we go. This is number one. Next to it has numbers. Number two, three, four, five, and six. If you have it in front of you, you will be able to see it. I don't know if you can see it through the camera. So I'm using Arctic Silver 5 thermal paste. This tube costs around $10. Australian for a tube So you want to put on each chip half a rice grain size in the center and Don't spread it out Each chip is each shiny shiny part So the CPU has two shiny parts So you want to put half of a rice grain each on each shiny part 
and on the graph card there's only one so you just want to put half a rice grain on that so here we go you align the um, heat sink with the screws don't try not to press down on it as you'll spread out the thermal paste the idea is to let when you screw it in let the screws spread it out so I'm screwing the screws in order if you don't know what order it is just watch the video So the screws on the graphic card actually come off. The screws on the heat, uh, the CPU doesn't. that's about it just need to replug the fan in don't forget to plug the fan in it's really important you're gonna get an error message and that's about it thanks for watching this this system is relatively really easy you don't have to go that far as going further than removing the quick access panel is useless as a CPU and graphic card soldered on the screws are similar to each other so you don't have to put it aside but that's about it and thanks for watching my video.